Welcome to the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and I'm so excited that you're here. The Plan B CRNA podcast is the only show made specifically for nurse anesthetists who are exploring options outside of their traditional career paths. This is the place to expand your mind and your goals as we uncover new ways to produce side income together. Journey with me as I go down various rabbit holes to explore the best Plan B options for you. This episode is brought to you by On Call Capital. On Call Capital is dedicated to educating CRNAs and other healthcare providers about investing outside of the traditional stock market. On Call Capital also provides opportunities for you, yes, you, to create passive income and generational wealth while also lowering your taxable income through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that right now so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me today. And now on with the show. Welcome to the rabbit hole on the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones. And throughout my journey in finding a Plan B, I've gone down numerous rabbit holes to figure out which ones work for me. Since I've done some of this research already, I only think it's right to bring that information to fellow healthcare professionals to help aid in your search. As always, it's important for you, the listener, to do your own research and form your own opinions. Everyone's situation is unique, and a plan B that works for one CRNA doesn't always work for another. Self-awareness is the key in any decision you make, since you must have an accurate grasp of your own strengths, weaknesses, and goals. Now, today's topic is one that I've had my eye on for some time now, so I thought, what the heck, let's go for it. Our rabbit hole of the day is, dun, 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 low content publishing. Now, if you're like I was a few months ago, then you're probably wondering, what in the world is low content publishing? Well, first off, not everyone actually agrees on what low content books actually are, but Amazon defines them as any books that have repetitive pages with little to no words. This primarily refers to books like notebooks, planners, journals, sketchbooks, and the like. Now, I mentioned Amazon's definition since one of the best places to upload low content books is Kindle Direct Publishing, or KDP. There are a number of other categories that are considered as low content books, but don't necessarily fall into this definition. They are better known as medium content books with a little more content and not so much repetition. Think of coloring books, workbooks, activity books, etc. The general idea is that you create a template, send it to Amazon, and they create the product and ship it for you when someone orders it. For example, you can design a cover and exterior of a journal as well as the interior. You upload that template to, to KDP and they take care of actually creating the product from when a customer purchases that product. You and Amazon both get a cut of the proceeds. Now, a few years ago, low content publishing was a great get rich quick scheme. You could publish books without having to write them, meaning you could put a product out there with essentially no effort at all. You could mass produce these babies and make a bunch of money. But of course, this led to tons more competition in the space, and now it's becoming harder to just mass produce them and expect to be compensated. Does that mean that low content publishing is dead? Heck no. I mean, there are still plenty of opportunities out there. Now, you do have to be a bit more thoughtful with your content, providing a level of quality that the mass producers simply won't have. Some of your low content stuff may need to move into the medium content space. So, you know, we'll, we'll talk about both today. But before we really get into those details, I want to expand upon the various types of low content and medium content books that you can produce. Again, these are any books with repetitive pages and little to no text, such as journals. These are meant to be filled out by the consumer and they don't have to have a whole lot of text at all. These include gratitude journals, prayer journals, food journals, and bullet journals, to name a few. Planners. These have more text than journals, but they are definitely repetitive in nature and require the consumer to fill them out. These include family planners, school planners, wedding planners, and job planners. Notebooks. Now, these are definitely low content. I mean, it's usually just lined paper, pretty cut and dry. Log books or ledgers. Similar to planners, these books are for logging expenses, transactions, food logs, workout routines, etc. Sketchbooks. These are typically blank for the artists who want to carry a book around with them for painting, drawing, and illustration. Music composition notebooks. 
Not one that I actually would have thought of since I'm not a musician myself, but these contain the standard lines needed to write your own music. Yes, the format is different from others on the list, but it's still very repetitive. And finally, guest books. These are repetitive books for guests of a wedding, a party, baby shower, hotel, or any other event or place where people are keeping track of names and contact information. Now, let's talk about those medium content books. Remember, these take a bit more effort overall to produce. Coloring books. Kids and even adult coloring books are pretty popular these days, but no one wants to color the same picture over and over, so these do take more effort to actually put together. Workbooks. These are basically a guide with prompts. Every page may be different, so it's not really low content. Activity books. If you've ever actually opened an activity book, you realize that a fair amount of planning went into its creation. There may be holiday activity ideas or subject-specific activities, kids' summer activities, or even mindfulness activities inside. Content should be original and engaging for each page. Next is puzzles and game books. Surprisingly, these can be quite easy to produce, but you do have to have a different puzzle or game for each page. Quote books. These are collections of inspiring quotes, often in a calendar-type format. The quotes may focus on a particular theme, and the content itself is easy to find, but it isn't necessarily repetitive enough to qualify as low content. So we're talking daily inspiration, mindfulness, Bible quotes, and the like. And finally, learning cards. Now, these may not be books, but they serve a similar function. You can use third-party sources to create them and then drop ship them on Amazon. Examples include child or toddler learning cards, subject-specific learning cards, meditation or affirmation cards, trivia cards, or conversation cards for date nights and parties. Now, I do want to take a minute here to acknowledge an offshoot of this whole idea, which is printables. This is a similar business model, and I read about a woman who was doing it on Etsy instead of Amazon. Now, when COVID hit, this woman who happens to be behind the website moneyhackingmama.com learned about her sister paying a lawyer $250 for a COVID form. So she did a little research and uh, she began to create COVID-related forms for businesses and put them up for sale on her Etsy site. Buyers would purchase the PDF and print off however many they needed. These types of forms were available for anywhere from $10 to $50. And she realized how lucrative it could be once she saw the sales start to come in. And of course, there are plenty of printables ideas out there. In her case, she began to use the site eRank, which provides Etsy keyword research and competitor analysis. But I digress. We'll get back to the actual topic at hand. So you get the idea of the options out there for you to publish. But how do you actually get started? Well, there are a couple of directions that you can take. You can take that Etsy route for printables that I just mentioned, and I do have that link in the show notes. But what I'd like to actually focus on today is the low content publishing route. Now you can publish low content books in many of the same places that you can publish regular books, including Amazon KDP, Barnes and Noble Press, and Ingram Spark. Sites like Lulu and Redbubble also allow you to publish low content, but they have preset interiors, and the only thing you can change is the design on the front. And these are usually journals or notebooks. Now, the process is somewhat universal for all of these platforms, but for our purposes, let's focus on Amazon KDP. For paperback and hardcover books, Amazon offers you a 60% royalty rate based on your distribution settings. If you select expanded distribution, that number drops to 40%, although the number of sales you get may be higher. These royalties come after the cost of printing, so you'll have to price your books high enough to get enough of these royalties to make it worthwhile. If you're going to be successful, you'll need to find some niches that you can work within. The nice thing about the business is the ability to pivot on a dime, depending on what is popular or on demand. But once you've created something, it's out there unless you remove it. So how can you find out about the niches that work? That's where keyword search comes in. Through keyword search, you can research niches of groups of people and markets on Amazon for notebooks and logbooks. Basically, you go to amazon.com and search for a particular keyword, such as surfboard, and you add the word notebook or journal or planner or something or other, and you search, such as surfboard notebook. 
or surfboard journal. If you find a lot of competition, then maybe that one is covered. If there isn't much, then it may be a niche worth looking into. Chrome extensions can come in very handy with this, and a few of the best ones are AMZ Suggestion Expander. This expands the number of search suggestions that are shown in the Amazon search bar by showing the keywords that Amazon would suggest before and after the keywords you've entered. DS Amazon Quick View. Now, this is a productivity extension that adds Amazon rankings and seller information to the search results and the bestseller pages. And then finally, Keywords Everywhere. Now, unlike the others I just mentioned, this Chrome extension works for 15 plus websites like Google Search, YouTube, and of course, Amazon. It can show you monthly search volume, competition, and 12 month trend data. It is used more for adding keywords once you've actually decided on a particular niche though. Now you can download all of these onto your Chrome browser, and then they will be at your disposal anytime you use Amazon or other sites. They allow you to search and discover new keywords and niches that you may not have considered before. Once you've searched for surfboard notebook, you'll see what pops up and then you can check out the bestseller rank or BSR. The lower the number, the more a product is selling. Now, if you find a niche with BSRs under 2 million, then you may be in good shape and the product will probably sell. You can use this opportunity to see what other sellers are putting in their product description to see what is working and what might not be. You can also see particular publishers and look into what niches they're actually producing for. If you see a product with a BSR around 200,000 or so, then you know that that product is actually selling every day. Keyword search using Chrome extensions does take some practice and playing around. But once you find a niche, then you can move on to the next step. Next, it's time to create your product PDFs to upload to Amazon KDP. For each product, you'll need to create two PDFs, one for the interior and one for the exterior. The PDF for the inside will be a lot of repetition with perhaps 100 pages or so with some low content inside, such as quotes or prompts. Using Google Docs makes this actually pretty easy as you can add tables to just add those lined pages. Just play around with it a bit. And once you've created one page, you can copy and paste to the number of pages you desire, and then you download it as a PDF. The PDF for the outside will include the front and back covers along with the spine of the notebook or journal. For this part, you'll want to have some design software. And no, you don't have to run out and pay hundreds of dollars for a year-long subscription for Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator. You can use Canva right now for free to create your own covers, or you can find other options out there that cost much less. My suggestion would be to check out Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo, each of which they, they each cost a one-time payment of $69.99. Now, this is a huge savings compared to Adobe products. And of course, there are some free versions of other software out there aside from Canva, but you'll probably be a bit limited in what you can actually do. Now, before you get started, you'll want to go to KDP Cover Template Generator, which that link is in the show notes, and you'll want to create a basic paperback template. This takes just a minute, and then you download that PDF so that you can open it in Canva or Affinity Designer. From there, you can design and save your own PDF book or journal cover using that software. Again, you'll have to play around with whatever software you have to get the hang of it. And there are some great videos out there to walk you through that process. But I happen to enjoy the video in Rob Cuban's free course on selling notebooks and low content books on Amazon. And he goes through an example of actually creating a cover on an Affinity Designer. Now that you've done that, it's time to upload your product and set up your listing. This will take some time in the beginning, but believe it or not, it's actually possible to get this process to the point where you can create and upload a book in about 15 minutes or less. As always, this depends on the amount of content you actually put into the journal or notebook. But, you know, hey, let's get on with this, shall we? When you visit the KDP website to upload your product, you will be asked to provide a book title and subtitle. You will also need to create a description for your product, and it will need to be in HTML format. Don't worry, though. If you're looking for help, you can always visit kindlepreneur.com for their book description generator to generate the HTML code. And that link is also in the notes. You'll also have to put in keywords so that users can find your notebook, 
and you'll have to choose categories for your product. Now, I don't want to get too into the weeds here since there are some really great videos out there. And again, Rob Cuban's videos are really helpful and they're free. So once you've uploaded your PDFs, it will launch a print previewer for you and you can check and approve your notebook. Save and continue. And then all you have to do is decide on a price and expanded distribution and determine where you'd like to sell it. I mean, maybe everywhere, right? So you want to make sure you're getting a minimum of $1 in royalty, but preferably two to four dollars for each sale. And luckily they show you that when you type in your sell price, so you can adjust that price accordingly. Hit publish and then your product is out there in the world ready to make money for you. And in a nutshell, that is the process of creating a low content book. Now for my favorite part of the show though, pros and cons. The first pro is that there are very low startup costs. I mean, you can literally start doing this for free today. It is one of the cheapest ways out there to start making money online. Next is a con, little control. Once you put a product out there, it's just out there. Maybe it will do well, maybe it won't. The Amazon algorithm changes frequently and you don't know how high or low you rank for particular keywords. And sure, you can try to create a brand and a following you know, to try to mitigate this somewhat, but that happens to be extra work as well. Now, next is a pro, easy concept. It's not difficult to get started and you don't have to be a great artist or designer either. Some of the highest selling covers are text-based, so you don't even have to be that creative to find success. Next is a con, competition. When something is cheap and easy to get into, lots of people are going to flood the market. There are plenty of poorly designed products out there, so it can be hard for your product to stand out in a literal sea of notebooks and journals. Amazon has been coming down on publishers for low quality lately, but it does take some time for them to get there. Next is a pro, passive income. This is kind of a set it and forget it type thing. I mean, once your product is out there, it can make money for you day or night. And it's a numbers game, but those numbers can get pretty darn big over time. And that's, I think, pretty doggone cool. So next is a con, copycats. If you have a successful book, there's a chance that someone else could make an exact copy and post it. Yes, you can report them, but it will take time for Amazon to take action. And when you get a couple of hundred products out there, it can be hard to keep track of. Next is a pro, sell anywhere and everywhere. On Amazon, you legitimately have access to millions of shoppers around the world. Next is a con. Your business is based on a specific platform. If Amazon makes changes to KDP, whether that's new compliance requirements or changes to the royalty amounts, then you are at their mercy. And adapting a few books is different from changing hundreds or thousands of products, which you would have to do if they change you know, their compliance requirements. So next is a pro. There are no physical products for this business. You don't have to physically create your books, which means you don't have that overhead to have to worry about. Our final con, there is a finality to publishing. Once you've published your title, there are some things that you just can't change. Stuff like author name, title, or subtitle can't be changed. So if you get flagged for anything, you have to actually unpublish your book and then republish with the desired changes. And our final pro, flexibility. You can do this business anywhere you have an internet connection, so you have a lot of flexibility in your work environment and your schedule once you get successful. Now, I really enjoyed researching for this rabbit hole episode, and I hope you've gotten some useful tips out of it. Make sure you check out the show notes for other links to a ton of resources. And there are a couple of online resources you can check out to get free or cheap guides on how to start your own low content business. I mentioned Rob Kuban earlier, and he has a free video series and a more in-depth series that's available for $87. It does appear that some of that content is from around 2019 though, so things may have changed a little bit. And Rachel Harrison Sund has a low content profits academy course that has great reviews. It is available for three payments of $99 or a one-time payment of $279. And you can also check out 
the, the following book, Low Content Publishing, a how-to guide on creating passive income, selling low content books on Amazon by Steve Roberts. Now inside, he teaches you how to create books that sell and how to uncover the most profitable niches. Now that's going to do it for the show. As always, I'd like to thank you for listening to the Plan B CRNA podcast. And if you found value today, make sure you hit subscribe and give us a five-star review. This show only grows because of you, so make sure you share it with a friend, family member, or colleague to help them on their side income journey. I also want to hear from you. If you have a question, comment, or rabbit hole topic that you'd like me to cover in an upcoming show, just put it in your review of the podcast. I check those all the time, and I cover those questions in future episodes. If you'd like to know more about me and gain access to passive investment opportunities, make sure to find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or visit my website at www.oncallinvestments.com. This is Bobby Jones signing off. Till next time, stay safe and take care of each other out there. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.